Welcome to today's presentation on Management and Leadership for Nurse Administrators, 7th edition. In addition to discussing what's new to the text, the author team will also highlight the trends in healthcare as well as other forces influencing nursing leadership. They will also spend some time discussing how best to use this text. Later on in the presentation, we'll also explore Navigate to Advantage Access, the digital component which accompanies this title. Today I'm joined by authors Dr. Linda Roussel and Dr. Tricia Thomas who will lead today's presentation. Dr. Linda Roussel is a professor at the University of Alabama Birmingham School of Nursing and serves as the Doctor of Nursing Practice Program Director. There she teaches courses in leadership, translational and improvement science, and scholarly project design and implementation. Dr. Roussel has also authored and co-authored several nursing textbooks throughout her career. Through the Health Resources and Services Administration, Dr. Roussel has been awarded grant funding for developing graduate nursing programs, including the Clinical Nurse Leader and the Doctor of Nursing Practice. As Project Director, she has received over $1 million of HRSA funding to establish a nurse-managed clinic responsible for health care outcomes of an underserved population in Mobile County. Dr. Tricia Thomas is the Vice President of Clinical Quality and Transformation and is the Chief Nursing Officer for Trinity Home Health Services in Livonia, Michigan, where she provides strategic leadership to home and hospice services in the 21-state Trinity Healthcare System. A leader in both practice and academia over the last 30 years, Dr. Thomas has research interests in professional development, the role of the clinical nurse leader, as well as empowerment models. She also serves on several state and national boards and is an ANCC magnet appraiser. James Harris is also an author on this text, and he is a consultant and professor of nursing in Nashville, Tennessee. At this point, I'd like to turn the presentation over to Linda and Tricia. Please go ahead. Hi, and thank you for that beautiful introduction. This is Tricia Thomas. Um, Linda and I are actually going to spend a few minutes talking through the areas that uh, we believe we have greatest expertise in as we really walk through um, this new text, this edition of the text, and why we chose content areas uh, that we did. So when we think about healthcare trends on the third slide, you'll notice that there are things that many of us have been talking about for years breakthroughs in uh, big pharma and biopharmaceutical companies, expanded coverage, and this ongoing concern around limited access. But health reform in recent years has begun to shift um, how we look at what coverage means and how people who otherwise would have been limited in their ability to access care now have um, access through population health management strategies and interventions around both health promotion and prevention. Most importantly, people are experiencing insurance, but they have greater out-of-pocket costs than they may have historically, irrespective of how they've um, acquired their insurance. And all these things really point to the need for nursing leaders to both influence groups and to lead differently as we expand our care from inside hospital walls to well out into the community across a variety of healthcare settings. On the next slide, um, we really wanted to call out the evolving healthcare models. Um, and while cost has driven many of these changes, I don't think any of us would be surprised in the number of primary care physicians, specialists, offices, community-based, retail clinics, um, inbound and outbound care facilities, and um, skilled nursing facilities in the community that are now really trying to cope with how healthcare is shifting, how reimbursements are changing, and the need for nursing practice and certainly nursing leadership and decision making are coming to the forefront. So as we talk about this, many of the things we've considered historically still bear true, but we also realize that our sphere of influence is changing and expanding, and the teams that we will be leading and supervising and supporting are changing as well. 
One of the things that I think all of us have experienced in terms of technology is really this untapped potential for technology to enhance our practice rather than become the focus of it. All of us, I think, have experienced changes with iPhones and cell phones, but mobile texting, um, audio devices, the ability to integrate data for many uh, different platforms has become a way of life certainly outside of healthcare and beginning to emerge as work that we need to do within healthcare. No more important group of people in influencing those decisions than the nurses that are affected by them. So pay for performance, bundled payment, um, all of the shifts in healthcare organizations, the recognition for um, needing empiric outcomes, whether it be for magnet designation or to be be the preferred provider in contracting. Each of these influence both care delivery models and how we prepare nurses to lead in the future. As we talk about health disparities on the next slide in social determinants of care, nurses have been well uh, connected to the concerns both in the community and the gaps in care that have been created um, over the many years. Um, those who were once one, uh, uninsured now have access to care and service, but we may not have an infrastructure to support them in the care that they wish to receive. Likewise, as we shift care out into the community and away from acute episodes of care, focusing on patient wellness, we need to be even more um, cognizant of the cultural perspective and values, the preferences that our patients and families might have based on their cultural uh, beliefs and values. So when we think about how we are preparing for this future of nursing leaders and care, across practice settings, it's going to be even more important for us um, to consider what our patients want, not what we want to deliver to them. And last but not least, I think nurses have often led interdisciplinary teams of professionals in achieving outcomes, um, but we are really beginning to experience some non-traditional healthcare providers um, in what we call health advisors or patient navigators, but the language also includes all of our unlicensed personnel, medical assistants, patient care techs, health coaches, and community health workers, all of whom will need leadership and supervision to ensure the safety and the quality of care um, that we are obligated to provide um, to our, our communities. So wanted to call those things out as healthcare trends, probably not issues that we aren't familiar with, but certainly um, outlining the complexity of care that is before us and the real opportunity that we have to lead change into the future and accomplish those goals um, that we work so hard on together. Linda? Yes. Uh, thank you, Tricia, and it's so great to, to hear your voice, and thank you, Jennifer, for that, for that wonderful introduction. Um, it has been my really great privilege and honor to work with James and Tricia on the seventh edition and, um, and really coming together from our varied backgrounds, our, our, our very strong focus on leadership and management. Uh, so our seventh edition has really been streamlined with an intense focus on translational science. We considered the healthcare transformation, the Affordable Care Act, uh, nurse leaders' scope of practice and leading teams. Uh, as Tricia shared, um, that uh, we our principles are enduring in terms of leading and management. However, the way that we work now is very different from the way we worked uh, even five years ago because of the increased technology, the complexity of care, um, all of the cultural and the social determinant issues. So working with teams, uh, translating evidence to improve practice, uh, value-added innovation, coaching um, rather than disciplining or using punitive actions for, uh, for Im Im improving performance are all, are in all embedded in the a new edition. Uh, we added some, uh, some additional chapters. We have a great chapter on messaging and dissemination, uh, the use of language and stepping into our scope of practice. Um, what nurses are educatedly prepared for, um, we wanted to focus on that. And so I'm going to um, ask Trish to lay out the seventh edition um, as a partner in, uh, putting, um, in putting this together. Trisha? 
I'm not sure, Tricia, it's all I've got the it. layout of the seventh edition. Um, it's actually three parts, and we actually right. had uh, uh, this was in our sixth edition. Uh, the first part, leading in times of complexity and rapid cycle change, again, our enduring principles uh, really kept to the core, again, however, our lens. And so our focus on uh, leadership, transformational leadership, um, innovative leadership, and then our business of healthcare processes and principles uh, also are uh, included and uh, strengthened in terms of our Affordable Care Act, high reliable organizations, and our uh, value-based purchasing. And lastly, part three, leading to improve the future quality and safety of health care, a real strong focus on quality, uh, safety, improvement, and uh, um, again, uh, really using the uh, the principles and expanding and uh, with the translation and improvement science. Tricia, next slide. So the framework for our revisions really focused on four major pieces of work. First, the American Organization of Nurse Executive Competencies, highlighting uh, what nurse executives are both uniquely prepared uh, to provide, but equally the expectations that are held for nurse executives. Second is the Future of Nursing report that really highlighted a framework to guide the workforce and all nurses as we move toward 2020, um, really showcasing our need to practice at the full scope of our license and ability to become equal partners, to use workforce data, and to help support the ongoing education and development of nurses as we work to lead and direct healthcare reform to meet the needs of society. Um, the American Nurses Association Scope and Standards for Nursing Administration, um, recently revised, was also used to help highlight the ways in which we have been entrusted um, by the public to provide this kind of leadership and direction and decision making across the country. And last but not least, the framework for magnet designation that has been outlined by the American Nurses Credentialing Center. So as we've talked about these things, each of the chapters um, will start with highlighting the uh, AONE competencies and the future of nursing elements that are most specific to the content in those chapters, and it really highlights um, the importance of uh, leadership elements, concepts and constructs, um, and really the governance and empowerment um, that are held um, by all that lead in nursing, but spe into specific content areas depending on the chapter uh, information. So why why is it you'll find that the seventh edition is compact? It, it's shorter. Um, so you might ask, but why did we do that? Uh, we we reduced the duplication and the replication. We also streamlined uh, the text to engage readers through synthesis of evidence and best management and leadership practices. So appreciating healthcare changes and also recognizing the need for greater application of theory research, evidence-based practice to translate this evidence into uh, management science. Uh, for example, the uh, clinical nurse leader and the uh, doctor of nursing practice recognizes micro and macro system settings and, again, uh, using improvement science, using best practices, high research evidence in order to be able to um, improve care at the bedside and also at the macro system. So the need for leadership at all levels. So we, the roles of nurse managers and nurse executives have changed, and we incorporated those changes, and that Tricia shared the framework for through A1, ANCC, the Institute of Medicine, Future of Nursing. Really strong, strong focus on application. Um, Tricia talked about, um, you know, again, using the, uh, the evidence and, and framing our work uh, to make sense, and so uh, the use of case studies, exemplars. Tra again, translating research evidence, uh, to improvement science, and implementing using, again, best practices and actionable evidence-based practice. And so really using exemplars to uh, illustrate um, really what this looks like from a nurse manager and nurse uh, executive perspective. So as we um, as we move forward, uh, why the changes? And, you know, Tricia so eloquently uh, shared uh, the changes in health reform, 
um, the quality as a driver for pay for performance, accountable care um, organizations, Affordable Care Act, the really the ability to show the return on investment to reduce costs, um, being good, strong financial stewards, so have strong content in reimbursement, budgeting, uh, cost-benefit analysis, the focus on the triple aims, population, uh, health care. So what does all this mean in terms of re reinforcing, again, the strong emphasis on application, best practices, exemplars uh, that, in, that illustrate enduring principles and concepts. And again, the accountability, um, really strong focus embedded in accountability. So really looking at the um, the, the metrics um, of, of population health and what that means in terms of outcomes, um, sustaining outcomes. We have a very strong chapter that Dr. Harris wrote on uh, the nurses, nurse leadership and sustaining outcomes. Um, great outcomes are not sufficient, again, that are cost effective, efficient, leveraging cost and quality, uh, demographics, and we, again, we, talked to, we have a strong focus on population health and also how technology has really changed the way we do our work, um, and also the patient is in control, the consumer, and the use of big data, um, again, as, as, as a, uh, a means of, uh, in, of helping us and nurse leaders, nurse managers to do their work um, in, in, in terms of efficiency and effectiveness. Next slide. So what's new? Again, I, um, uh, I, to reinforce what we've talked about, uh, the, ch the chapters have been streamlined with essential content. Uh, we had 24 chapters, we had 15 chapters. Uh, every chapter has reflective questions, uh, interactive case studies, the strong, intense application focus, uh, exemplars, and, a, and, a ver and an added um, to the, the seventh edition are the interviews with nurse leaders. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later, um, that we actually had the opportunity to validate the concepts uh, through our work, uh, through the interviews with our nurse leaders. So again, Linda, I think, has really called out many of the elements um, that relate to the importance of this work and extending our knowledge. But the future of nursing uh, report, as well as the triple aim, are really driving how healthcare is changing before our very eyes. As we really think about how clinically integrated networks, understanding that care needs to be delivered across practice settings in a more effective and efficient way that recognize both cost and quality in the community as within the triple aim, understanding that teamwork, changes in team composition, innovation, new knowledge, and the expectation of evidence-based practices that bring us to um, measurable outcomes um, will become the norm without leadership in those areas making the significant changes in this accelerated um, time of change will um, not be possible. Likewise, as we consider high reliability organizations, um, we need to manage risk effectively through appropriate interventions and the ability to stratify those interventions that will bring the greatest um, effect to those that are being served. And that will, again, require leaders to be even more focused on those areas that are going to prevent serious reportable events or injury and highlight and showcase both cost-effective care related to safety as well as the ability to manage and monitor um, for change. One of the things that I think is um, really unique uh, in this textbook is the recognition that professional development is a trajectory and that the roles and the functions that used to be serve as the training ground to help people develop those skills are shifting and changing very rapidly. Therefore, um, coaching and mentorship will become the tools that we use not to address a performance deficit but to recognize talent and to really think about how we're going to create a trajectory for ongoing talent development as part of our leadership practice. So mindfulness, um, really being uh, aware of resilience as we manage change and doing some of those self-care reflective practices to help us be effective will become our norm. 
So I think we've spoken to many of the things that are going to influence nursing leadership, but certainly care complexity with increased um, acuity and many more people having access to care delivery um, is going to be the big shift that we need to prepare for in the next five to ten years. But health promotion, prevention, and not only addressing episodic or high acuity care will really expand the scope of nurses' care, practice, and interventions making it even more important for us to have strong nursing leaders that provide both direction and support. Care delivery redesign is already underway through value-based care and purchasing, pay for performance, bundles, and really this shift in interdisciplinary team members. So expanding our nursing role in healthcare being um, coaches, making sure that we're aware of big pharma, care management, and transition management will be just a few of the things that we um, develop uh, in, in this next recent year. So when we talk about health care reform, access to care certainly will shift this, but policy changes in terms of reimbursement um, are going to need to coexist with all of this development work. And as we commonly think of formulary and supply chain, I think we also need to embrace the idea that many of the technology applications that are available us t today will actually change how nurses practice and the interventions that they were once required uh, to administer now being available on a self-help kiosk or through a handheld device. So technology is going to become our norm. It's also going to cross the continuum as we think about long-term care, skilled facilities and community-based clinics, not to mention retail marketplaces, both in shopping malls, um, grocery stores, and the ways uh, that people uh, receive their care could be very different than what we have learned. So there are many things, many exciting elements um, in terms of changes in healthcare delivery and the places and spaces where nurses are actually going to be practicing a genuine opportunity for us to lead health reform and really to place the nursing discipline and profession um, in the forefront of all those things uh, that will help patients accomplish their health goals. So a lot of exciting times um, while we sit and consider what needs to come next, all of them requiring nursing leaders that are able to meet the demands um, that are placed before them. And, and with that being said, um, the, uh, from a, a pedagogy perspective and the strategies that we use to uh, develop uh, the infrastructure uh, for the book, again, um, we kept the objectives in terms of uh, the framework uh, with the guiding competencies of A1, uh, ANCC, the Institute of Medicine, Future of Nursing. Uh, we added reflective questions. We added case studies that, do, that were crosswalk to the content and the chapters. Uh, we, we continued to use exemplars of best practices. And we added the qualitative look through nurse leader interviews, uh, which again reinforced um, the, the, the content and the application aspect of the, of the new edition. Next, next slide. So why would you want to use this book? Um, all the essential content is covered. Uh, we kept the enduring principles. Uh, we included forces that are influencing health care in terms of the trends. Uh, leadership theory has always been a strong focus in all the editions. Uh, we really focused on uh, in leadership theory from our, historically, from, from leadership theory and then moving to quantum leadership, innovative leadership, uh, strong focus on professional practice, uh, healthcare delivery models, professional accountability, uh, risk management, continued to focus on organizational structure, organizational cu culture and communication, and again, it really focused and, and underscored messaging and dissemination and imaging in terms of the nurse leader, the nurse executive's role in healthcare delivery. So what is the book's utility? Um, again, why would you want to use this book? Um, strong focus on professional development, uh, managing human capital uh, resource uh, management, continue to focus on budgets, reimbursement, return on investment, uh, managing performance as well as coaching. Um, Tricia talked about coaching as really being for development and for, um, and for professional growth. 
strong focus on information technology uh, with the new regulation in terms of the High Tech Act. Uh, we added a meaningful use as a strong uh, focus in our technology chapter. Laws, policies, and regulations. Uh, we actually had an attorney uh, who was also a nurse work with Dr. Harris uh, on really focusing on uh, the Board of Nursing, looking at uh, Nurse Practice Acts, procuring and sustaining resources, achieving accountable, uh, sustainable and accountable outcomes, and really looking at uh, benchmarks and uh, nursing sensitive indicators, and a strong chapter on strategic planning, um, which again reinforced you know, the need to, to work in time, but also to um, uh, vision the future in terms of management and leading healthcare organizations. Next chapter. Next. Next uh, slide. Uh, hearing the voice of nurse leaders, um, I was very honored to interview 17 uh, nurse leaders, nurse managers, and actually we interviewed individuals from every region of the United States and also in our inter some of our international partners. Uh, the, the nurse leaders and management managers came from a wide variety of settings. Uh, there were system leaders, service line directors, acute care nurse managers, vice presidents of uh, patient care services, um, home care and ambulatory care settings, um, as well as chief nursing officers from uh, academic medical centers, um, systems leaders in large for-profit and not-for-profit organizations were also interviewed. Uh, the, th the questions that, that actually um, generated the uh, responses uh, that uh, Trisha and I looked at in terms of looking at patterns and themes were actually three questions. And the first question was, what messages would you give uh, to those aspiring to be clinical or executive leaders in today's healthcare system? Uh, another, the second question that we asked was what experiences would be critical for nurse administrative students to have during their academic preparation for nurse leadership roles? And lastly, um, our question was how should academic and clinical partners um, work together uh, to provide the best experiences to and dedicate and didactic content during their preparation for nurse leadership? So from these uh, 45 minutes minute to an hour, minutes to an hour interview, um, the patterns and the themes emerged were lifelong learning, you know, role modeling, expanding the role of the nurse leader. We heard um, a lot on professional development, self-development, which included uh, being mindful, learning from yourself, self-reflection, um, being aware. Um, the role of coaching and mentoring was critical. And while the business acumen uh, for nurse leaders and nurse man managers continues to be critical to sustainable outcomes in, a, in our healthcare system. It was that development role and that role of inspiring um, nurse leaders uh, and our, our frontline staff that was that was very um, strongly uh, stated again by all the nurse leaders. Uh, these enduring concepts with this new lens, um, you know, adding value, you know, guiding leaders. The taking failure and allowing others to learn of and through it uh, to get to the other side more confident and more competent. And learning from that and others should allow us to be whole and relevant and meaningful. And the importance of making sense to our, those that we work with, those that are entrusted to our care. And our past experiences aren't, aren't sufficient. Uh, again, the, the involvement in other, working with other disciplines, uh, powerful work teams, um, extending acute to community-based and that care across the continuum, the complexity and change, um, and again, the sense-making, uh, because pressure is so great uh, to, to not only look at our, the efficiency, uh, and, but the quality, um, and not volume, but the quality that goes with that. And again, the ability to help people so we can learn and be curious. Um, so again, this was a wonderful opportunity to actually uh, hear the live voice of nurse leaders who live this every day. Next slide. 
So connecting con concepts to content, and you'll see by this slide that uh, the value-added metrics, uh, how, how do you add value? We have a number of chapters that reinforce those concepts. The practice of leadership, innovative leadership, quantum leadership, um, the leader is an executive guide, uh, health, uh, the care delivery models, uh, the larger worldview, conceptualizing leadership practice, the application, and then the self-reflection, appreciative inquiry, and learning from self. Uh, from the interviews, again, thread it through all of the content um, that, uh, that we offered in this, uh, in this seventh edition. So I'll turn it over to Jennifer. Thanks, Linda, and thanks, Tricia, for that really informative um, presentation on the textbook, as well as some of the issues and trends that are influencing nursing leadership today. At this point in the presentation, I just wanted to take a few minutes to discuss Navigate2 Advantage Access. For those of you who aren't familiar, Navigate2 is an online resource for both students and instructors. It unlocks a comprehensive and interactive ebook, student practice activities and assessments. There are also case studies that are featured with the seventh edition of this text, as well as a full suite of instructor resources that include learning analytics reporting tools that help you as an instructor understand where your students need a little bit of help and what progress they're making in the course. And it's also important to note that each new purchase of the textbook includes uh, Navigate Advantage access for free. So there is an uh, access code that's bundled within uh, each of the textbooks. So when your students get this text in the fall, we do encourage you to um, ask them to use it. Uh, there are a lot of tools in there uh, that will definitely enrich and enhance the learning experience. So you can test drive Navigate2 to today if you're interested in learning more about it. And I invite you to do so today by visiting www.jblnavigate.com slash try it now. That will bring you to a demo site and also to our video library so that you can learn everything you need to know. And lastly, if you'd like to request a review copy of the text in advance of it publishing on August 1st, you can contact your sales rep if you know who your rep is that you work with at Jones & Bartlett Learning, or you can request a review copy by visiting the URL on the screen, go.jblearning.com slash MLNA7E. And we also invite you to really check out uh, our Navigate site. This is a new offering for instructors and students featuring a uh, completely free and interactive ebook. And again, I would like to extend my thanks to the author team for this textbook, Dr. Tricia Thomas, Dr. L Linda Roussel, and Dr. James Harris, and for uh, their really in-depth presentation today. And a reminder, the text does come out on August 1st. Thanks again.